Hey, okay, in this video, I'm gonna do a crank in my sled from start to finish. Um, any of you fucking players people know all the deal with those. For some reason, the 96s, especially these high output ones, have a wicked fucking PTO fucking bearing problem. And for you people that don't know, PTO side is the fucking clutch side. Um, I got a crank, ready to go in there. And the first step is getting the fucking motor out. So, and what sucks about doing that is the drain the cooling system. Blair's never built a way to really drain these systems without making kind of a mess. So. They're gonna start picking a little pull the exhaust off the shit, air box, and see about getting the coolant out of this thing as clean as possible. I might siphon it out. I don't know yet. Um, I'm thinking I might be able to pull a hose off somewhere and pressurize the system and push it out through that hose into a container. <clears throat> In theory, it should work. I just gotta get the right hose and pressure the right the right place. But anyway, I'll video it. Especially the the build process, you know, tearing the motor apart, checking everything and putting it back together for you. And really if you can't figure out how to get the, the motor out of your sled and back into it, then you really shouldn't even be trying to rebuild the fucking motor. Okay, the first thing you're gonna need a box or something to put your shit in. Um, this is how I do it. It then goes into one fucking box. <clears throat> two reasons. One, I have a photographic memory and I remember where everything goes. But two, it's only to go back and where it's supposed to go. If you take a fucking bolt out that's a lot long, and you got one the same but it's only this long, you can't put that short bolt in that long fucking hole because it ain't going to thread in. And vice versa, the long one's not going to tighten anything down. But, if you can't remember where things go, when you take the part off, put the bolt back in. Like the screws to the CDI box, take them out, move the box, put your screws back in. Now first here, I take the top of this box off, there's just a bunch of metal fucking snap clips to hold this on. Get in the screwdriver and just fucking twist them and pop them it off. Okay, now, carburetors. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can loosen your clamps, loosen them really good, and twist the carburetor and pull. Then you can leave them right in the sled. This sled has been sitting a winter and a half. Yeah. It's that all last winter and half a winter before that without being touched. So I want to take these apart and clean them, so I'm going to leave them on the motor. And to do that, you gotta take your slides out, which they just unscrew. Uh, I don't remember which ones, but some fucking carbs have a little lock and a set screw. It's got like a little tab on it. If you have that, just take it out. Sometimes you need a pair of pliers to get this started, but there's nothing to it. Just wind it right out. And they slide right up out. And those can sit. Be very gentle with these. Don't thrash them around. You try. You try. Try not to get burr on them. If you do, file the burr off and polish it with some sandpaper. And you don't want to bend your needles. Which of these? That's for your high end. Right. Anyway, you get the idea. Now the choke. Same thing. Take a wrench. Unscrew it from the carburetor, or you can take the big plastic nut off, the choke housing, put your choke on, pull it right through the hole. I smashed my fucking choke a year ago, so that's coming out with the carburetor, so that's staying right on them. So I gotta get a new cable. Okay, when doing this, you have to remove your end carburetor so you can get to your fucking motor mount, fucking nuts, and your oil cable. Which is underneath that cable, I mean, uh, underneath that carb. Um, so I'm going to remove all of them just so I can fucking 
give you guys a better view of what's going on. But as I said, twist them, and that will break the seal. And just fucking pull on them. There's one carburetor off. You're gonna get to the nut. Another one underneath that. Then the oil pump cable. So I'll take them all off. That way you can see better. Okay, nestled down here is your fucking oil pump. It's <clears throat> got a cable running down, pulling on the arm. And as you can see, there's two nuts. This is adjustments. This is your lock nut. You gotta reach under, get the lock free, wind the lock all the way off. So it slides down the cable. Pull it up, out through the slot. See that? Then just unhook it from the arm. There's nothing to it. Then when it goes back in, you gotta check the adjustment on it, and I'll walk you through that too. Okay, next to your exhaust. Now all it is is a series of springs hooked to it. Sometimes there's a bolt. Here's the springs. Just snap a pair of vice grips on them, give them a little tug to unhook them, and that's it. And the exhaust comes out. Then you got a cable for your hood. Usually runs through the exhaust. Take the screw out, support the hood. Now we're going to take the belt off, get all the motor mount bolts out, the coolant out of it. Okay, this is what I came up with for draining the system right now. Um, just fuel line, I'm just siphoning it out. Kind of a slow process, but no fucking rush. Um, I don't know how much I'm going to get out this way. <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to get some out. Um, when you unhook your oil hose, you're going to need to plug it, stick a bolt in it. Same with the fuel line. I don't know how this is going to work out. I'll let you know. Okay. It worked out pretty fucking good. Not a whole lot came out. But the important part is, when I pull the hoses off, I didn't spill coolant everywhere. That was, that's my main concern was that. Um, then next you got to deal with your fucking pull cord. Now, there's a couple ways you can go about it. You can take your rewind off. And just let it sit here. Um, what I do is I cut the knot off the fucking thing. You know, pull the string up out of your handle and just cut the knot. And feed it down through. But don't let go of the fucking rope. Whatever you do. Now just tie a big knot in it. Down by the motor. Yeah, pull it tight. Just make a knot so the cord doesn't go down in your rewind. If it does, you got to take it off and fix it. It's a pain in the ass. <coughs> So, you can either take the rewind off the motor, or just do what I do, cut the knot right at the handle, pull it out, cut it, pass it down through all the bullshit, just tie a knot in it, let it sit there. Um, yeah, I think it's ready to come out. Okay, the motor's out, put the sled outside and get the heat going. Um, the first thing is to take the clutch off. You're going to take the bolt out. There's a couple of O-rings you're going to fish out. And this fucking aluminum sleeve. Then you're going to need a clutch puller. Will you buy one or make one? It don't matter. There's, this one's homemade. It's a bolt with a bolt welded onto it. It works. Now you're just going to find the half inch impact. What you do is whack that with an impact. Sometimes it'll pop right off. If not, take a big hammer and hit it. Hit it again with the impact, hit it again with the hammer, and it should pop.
Okay, the next thing to do is take the coils off. Just take your bolts out. <clears throat> Just swing them the other way. <clears throat> now, instead of fucking my lines, what I'm doing is I'm going to unbolt the pump, take the carb flanges off, and take it all off in one unit. Okay, the next thing going after the flywheel. <clears throat> you take your fucking pulley bolts off. Now, these are usually left handed thread, which means you gotta tighten them to take them off. Um, I don't know if my puller is gonna work. I might have to go get bolts. But we'll see. Yeah, I get the nut off. I just wanted you to know that it's not a left handed thread, it's normal. So off is off. A lot of the older machines. They were left in the thread because they thought they'd spin off as they're running. Okay, <clears throat> bolts ain't long enough, so I'm gonna have to go to the hardware store and get some bolts. But what you gotta do is you're gonna need a puller that will bolt onto your flywheel and pull on the end of the crank and pop it off. So hopefully the hardware store got this size in grade eight. Um, <laughs> As you can see they're just little bolts, I think it's six mil. So anyway, I'm gonna stop here. I gotta go get bolts. I gotta stop by work and email some pictures out for the boss. I'm waiting on the call from the dyno shop because I'm hoping to take that 33 up to the dyno it. Okay, I got the carb flanges off so you can see what's going on here. The oil pump's unbolted and that just pulls out. So now all I do is when I undo my jug, I can take this all off as a unit. Okay, I'm gonna take the exhaust manifold off. Oh shit. I gotta take this off before I can take my jug off. Because there's a bolt got some nuts hidden in behind it. Um, I'm probably going to do some poor work on the case. Unless it's a good fit already, then I'm not going to fuck with it. I would actually like to go in and do some actual port work on the jugs, but I can't. And I'll get to why later. Um, now, if you're a sled, they should have brass nuts and they should come off easily. And as you can see, these are brass. If they don't have them, before you put it back together, go get some. Because if you ever have to take it apart again, it makes it so much easier. And also, when I take this off, I can look in and see this, the condition of my pistons. This sled was, well, it is low mileage sled, and I bought it. Didn't have shit for miles. I like 2,800 on it. But the guy that owned it before me ran fucking AMS oil in it, which I am fucking dead against. Um, I see more fucking problems coming from man's oil, oil than, than I can even fucking begin to imagine. Now it looks like I've got some issues here on my last piston. Oh, you can see that. Now you can 
can. You'll see when I take the jug off anyway. Okay, I'm popping pistons right now. And to do that, you gotta take the little C clip out. That. <clears throat> see, there's a little pocket right here. Just get another needle nose and pinch it good. Kind of twist it in a little bit and pull out. And it should come right out. You don't want to destroy the clip. Okay, I got the clip out. Now, in theory, these pins should just push it and out quite easily. Um, that never happens. So he uses a quarter inch drive extension with the big end in. And just go in, you know, with a hammer, lightly tap your pin out. Now, up in there, in the end of your rod, you got your rod bearing, which goes in on the pin. And you want to be careful not to fuck that up. But on this piston, I didn't really care because I'm going to put a new one in. I'm actually going to check on the price of pistons. Uh, I'm going to look on eBay, see what I can get them for. Uh, but I think it'll probably be more than I want to spend. So like I said, I'm going to check with the guy I got the crank from. And hopefully get a used fucking piston. Uh, I've got another one here that's showing some fucking signs I don't like. Right here. This is the number one piston. <clears throat> number one, by the way, is over here on your crank. The rewind sign. You see some score in here. It's actually pretty heavy right in here. I mean, you can feel the lumps and bumps. You can almost see this piston misshapen if you look at the skirt close enough. So, but that's what you get when you ran when you run fucking AMS oil. See, when AMS oil come out, they claimed you could run it 100 to one. And holy fuck, I seen so many motors blown up due to that, it wasn't even funny. Um, it was just a cheap fucking oil. They haven't changed nothing other than the price, it's gone up. But if you look at it, how they spell it, need I say more? It's fucking dirt, junk. I don't recommend AMS oil at all for anything, not even a fucking lawnmower, and I really don't give a fuck about lawnmowers. Um, I run Castrol or Polaris oil. I don't have any problems with it. Okay, I've got the bolts. Um, there's nothing tricky here other than make sure it's parallel to the flywheel. And don't wind these in with anything but your fingers. And don't wind them in too far. You only need to go in the thickness of the flywheel because what's what happens is there's coils in behind here and these screws can go through the flywheel and actually go into the coil and then cut some of the windings on them. So now you're going to hit this with an impact and if it doesn't pop I'll whack it with a hammer and it should pop. Okay, I finally get this to fucking pop. Um, I had to go get more bolts. Uh, one of them broke. Which, <coughs> I figured it would've, because they're just tiny little fucking things. <coughs> so what I did, is I tightened the shit out of the impact, gave it a couple whacks, tightened it again, and I've let it sit for like two hours, with the fucking tension on it. Then came out and whacked it, with a hammer. When I say a hammer, I mean a fucking hammer. And hit it again with the impact, hit it again with the hammer, and it fucking popped. So there. Now you've got a keyway in here. You don't want to lose that. Now you're going to transfer it to the other crank anyway. But now I've got to take the stator out. And you got to do this before you can split the casing. And sometimes there's only two bolts. This one's got three. Well, screws. 
When you're taking these little screws out, it's a good idea if you can to whack them lightly with a hammer. Now what I do is I put the screwdriver in there and whack the end of the screwdriver. One good whack. And <clears throat> take them out. Now as you can see, you've got timing marks right here. So when you put it back together, just line your marks up. Now if you turn the plate this way, so that timing marks over here, that's advanced, and on this side it's retarded. I don't advise advancing them, even though you can get a little bit of a little bit of fucking performance coming out of the hole with it, but you can run into detonation if you get it too advanced. So I always line them right back up on the marks. <clears throat> Okay, I got the stator out. <clears throat> you do, you take your screws out, push your grommet through, and then your wires will come all out in one shot. I've seen a few people that can't figure out the grommet thing and cut their wires, which is fucking dumb. <clears throat> but anyway, that's out. Now the next step is pull the motor mount plates and take these fucking screws out of the bottom and separate the case. Okay, all the bolts are out. Now, just like doing the fucking jobs. Go around tapping it. Now, I don't know if you can see that. <clears throat> On these, they got notches in here. See how easy that is? <clears throat> there. There's a fucking piece of shit crank. <clears throat> Now this is the oil pump. You always want to inspect your gear. <clears throat> Make sure it's not sharp up here. It wants to be flat, symmetrical. If you got sharp edges or it looks like it's worn a little bit, get a fucking new one. <clears throat> Yeah, that's all there is to it, other than you know, lifting the fucking crank up out. It's that simple. Oh, yeah. You can see it's fucking the bearing is junk. Well, these are good. So, technically. I can replace these two bearings and use this fucking crank. Which, at the fucking cost of these fucking cranks, I'm gonna fucking fix those bearings. Now, I gotta clean all this shit out of the bottom of this fucking case. That's why I bought two cans of brake cleaner. <clears throat> now, I'll clean the case up really good. And on the upper half, I'll take a fucking sanding block with 180 and just cuff it real quick I might even pop the fucking locating pins out at the bottom case and do the same so I know it's flat <coughs> so when it goes together it will be good and true okay I just checked the fitment of my case to my jug um, Audi Cats, 
I don't know, they fit like shit. Skidoos. I don't know how they are in the, in the fucking newer ones, but when they come out with the Rev, like the old 3 Rev, 04, somewhere around there, they fit like shit, and they're a problem keeping a fucking PTO seal in them. So I've had to fix a lot of them, and I always go in and, and fucking port the cases. And what you're looking for is where the jug goes down onto the fucking case. Oh. Uh oh. Right there. That line. What you want is a smooth transition. <clears throat> I'll explain why. When the piston goes up, this is a piston port motor. When the piston goes up, it creates a fucking vacuum down in your lower crankcase. And your, your air and fuel comes in and goes down. Comes in and goes down right into here. And it sets there. Now, when that piston is coming back down, it'll spark and it comes back down. It's putting pressure in here. Then what it does, underneath that pressure, that air and fuel is being sent back up this way. And it goes into the side ports here. Right? It comes up, goes into your ports here on your sides. It comes out these ports up here and lands on top of your piston. Then the piston comes back up, makes spark, and you know, you're making power. Now you can improve how your fucking motor goes, but you can be very careful for a few reasons. Um, design being one. You can re the already cat people. If you raise the roof on the exhaust port, that will help your motor a little bit, but you got to be careful not to go too much because that will hurt the performance of it. <clears throat> go in there and raise the roof a little bit in your port area. But I don't recommend it because these fucking cylinders are plated. Uh, I'm not sure if this one is. They got a nickel cell plating in your skidoos and your cats and shit. And it's just a plating. Well, that plating comes into your port a little ways. You know, it come in a little bit. Now, if you go in here with a die grinder and start opening your port up, you're taking away the plating. So you're leaving a rough edge right here on your port entrance. And you rink and catch it and peel your fucking plate off. You know, if you want to do the port work, send it out and have it replated. That's how you have to do it. If not, you're just fucking, you got to keep your toes crossed. Now, I might go in and work the little divider here a little bit and take out any casting flaws, make it smoother. Um, I don't need to do any work in here where the, where the jug fits the base because it fits fucking nice now, surprisingly. <coughs> Okay. I can't leave nothing alone. Um, just the way I'm wired. What I'm doing is I'm cleaning up the transfer ports, which are these ports here on the side. These are basically your intake runners, like say on a car. <clears throat> All I'm doing is knife edging them and blending them in till the wall's good. Anything you can do to improve the flow of your fuel coming up into these you'll make an improvement. As you can see, here's one that's left alone. See how it's flat? Yeah, you can see it there. When that air and fuel is coming up, it's hitting that, and it has to split to go around and divide into these two port passages. 
So what I'm doing is I'm just fucking putting a knife edge on them, taking that fucking roadblock out of the way, and blending it into the port. I'm not changing the porch. All I'm doing is knife edging and just making the transition into these ports and everything fucking good. I'm using the aluminum cutter. You have to have one of these. Now once I'm done that, I'll get a slip roll with 80 grit on it and just go in and clean these up a little bit more and be done. Okay, I'm all done. You can see I, I fucking cut it out. Then when there was fucking slip rolls, or just sandpaper rolls, uh, get them from Jeg's Summit. And when anything cleaned up where I've cut. Um, I also went in on the intake side. I made the transition on the floor into the ports a little bit better. It's kind of a fucking steep drop off. I just blended that into the port better, that's all. No big deal. <clears throat> um, I did that because air and fuel doesn't like to turn any more than 10 degrees. Anything above 10 degrees, it doesn't like to flow. And I know this from working on a fucking flow bench doing motors. Um, so I make that transition a little bit better. Anything you can do air and fuel out of that bottom of that motor and into the top of that piston. Anything you can do to improve the flow, do it. It will help. Um, like I said, I don't recommend changing your port shapes. Um, it can hurt you quick. But, if you wanted to take a chance with the plating, you can go in and raise the roof on your exhaust ports. Don't fuck with the port here. On the inside, you can raise the roof, widen them a little bit. That usually helps because that allows more exhaust to come out, which is the same as raising the roof. A roof, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it also fucks with the timing of the motor. So you got to be careful. So. You can improve flow by making your ports wider and not fuck with your timing and gain an improvement. I'm going to pull the fucking head off and water pump because I got I did more than I wanted to so I got to clean the fucking metal out of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip this down and I'm going to boil this in water and get all the shit out of it. Okay. Now for you those who don't know, when that piston's going up and it's sucking fuel in, some of it has to go down here into these holes. That's what lubricates your bearings. Now, I don't know what the fuck Flaris was thinking here. See the size of these holes? That's to lubricate one bearing. Oh, look at that. They made a small fucking hole here where they have two bearings. So, I don't know how they expected this one little fucking hole to supply oil to two bearings. So, I'm going to drill a hole this size. And then I'm going to blend all these holes in. Take the rough edges out of them here. Okay, here's a replacement crank. Um, I don't care who you get it from, whether it's fucking a fresh in the machine shop after being rebuilt, brand new in the box from Polaris, or whoever you're buying a crank from. Wash the fucking barons out. Get right in there with a fucking tool and blast them. You'll be amazed at the shit that comes out of those fucking barons. But do that to all of them. Yes, it's fun to take a blow gun and make this thing spin like a basher, but don't. You can damage your baron. Okay, now the next step before you put the crank in is to lubricate it. 
Um, I use gear oil. All you do is put a little bit in your bearing, let it soak in, spin it around a little bit, do it again. Um, you're probably going to give you, oh, what the fuck, gear oil? Yeah, it stays in place. It's thick. Now, not only do you got to do those, you got to lubricate your lower rod bearings. See that hole? That's where oil goes in. Just let it sit, and it'll go in, it'll run down around. You can use two stroke, but nothing else. Don't use regular motor oil. It's got detergents in it, shit. Then just spin them, spin them around on the journal so they're completely lubricated. Then you can put it in. Okay, I got a new seal in place. The PTO side has a sealed bearing in it now. It doesn't take a fucking seal. Um, locating pins. You're going to have pins. Now, this sled has notches in the upper case of the pins to fucking drop into. Some of them actually have holes in the case that the pins have to go in. If that's the fucking style you have, do that half the case first. Get your pins located and get it in. And <clears throat> you can go up the other half and put the fucking thing together. Um, Sealing the case is required of a fucking a non-hardening sealer. What is that? Um, I don't have any. Yellow Bond 4. Um, this stuff here works really good. It's non-hardening. It stays pliable. And this stuff here, this is what it's for. It's just as fucking, it's a non-drying completely. Uh, if you go to a Yamaha dealer, buy a tube of Yamo Bond 4. Same stuff as this. Really good shit. But all you're doing is putting a thin layer on your fucking surface. All the way around. Right to the very edge. Then put them together. Okay, as you can see, I've got it gooped up. Just a thin layer. You don't need to do a bead. You know, just just a good, maybe not a thin layer, but it's a layer. With the red stuff, it's more controllable. You can run a nice little thin bead. But anyway, <clears throat> the tricky part is getting your rods up to the hole. But that's not a big deal. And it goes together like that. Now sit right down on your pins. Now flip it on its side and put the bolts to it. Okay. Now when I get to this point, what I always do is pour oil down in the holes. Just fill up the cap. You know, force them in the holes. Um, resist the urge to crank your motor over really fast right now. Because what happens, the rods will fucking flop like that. And what you end up doing is just beating the fuck out of your cases. And you don't want to do that. Okay, <clears throat> the stator in, the flywheel back on. That's just a reverse procedure of how you took it out. Um, slide the grommet down your wires. Then push everything through, grommet it all. Get the stator bolted in. And then just push the fucking grommet in place. Now what I want to show you here is your oil pump. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, see that line right there? And you got one over here. When the sled's sitting running at idle, you want that mark to line up. 
and at full throttle, that line should mark up. I mean, that mark should line up. Very important. A lot of people have these off, but I don't. You want them to line up. And that's done with this adjustment up here on the cable. But I'll show you that when we put it together. It's, just, it's hard to see inside the slide, so I want to show you now so you can see it. While it's in the slide, you're usually going to get into the flashlight and see what the fuck you're doing. But. Okay, I've got the pistons on. Um, I just got them in the mail. And they are nice used pistons. Um, pretty straightforward. Put them on, same as you took them off. Push the pin in, put the clip in. Um, the only thing to note, um, piston position. You see this has an arrow on it. Now that arrow either has to go forward towards your exhaust side or towards your rewind. Most piston ports, they're going to be towards the rewind. Reed motor, they usually have them on the front. So keep that in mind. Um, you obviously can't put this fucking piston with the arrow facing here because the pin would be going this way. It ain't going to happen. <clears throat> so if your arrows are above your piston pin, put the arrow towards the rewind. Um, technically this piston could be spun and run except for the, the ring gap location I don't even see it you can see they got a little pin in the piston to stop the ring from spinning while the motor's running it's to keep that fucking ring gap in a certain spot in the cylinder because if it spun and got caught in like say one of the port entrances you'd catch a ring and break it and so that's why they're pinned so the rings doesn't they don't move um, the cylinders, they have like a built-in ring compressor. <coughs> You'll see on the bottom of the cylinder there's a chamfer. What you got to do is set that in place on top of your piston. And at the same time, kind of squeeze your rings and everything will just slide together. With these monoblocks, it's kind of a pain in the ass. But it's, I mean, it's doable. You're just going to kind of start on your two pistons on the outboard and squeeze your rings and walk the cylinder down okay <clears throat> get the jugs on and tighten down oil lines hooked back up got the pulley on the belt on um... I'm gonna make a note on the pump a lot of people don't realize it and I don't know why but there's always a way to adjust this belt on your fucking pump <clears throat> whether you have shims you gotta take out or add to make the pulley wider and narrower which would tighten the belt but in this case you got a slotted hole in the water pump so if you loosen these two bolts and push up here that will tighten the belt this one's fine I don't need to fuck with it um, just so you can kinda see and understand how a two stroke works as you can see, this piston's all the way up here. Well, almost all the way up. Yeah. That big hole just goes down underneath your piston, right to the crankshaft. And as you can see, the skirts close the ports off. Now, right here, that would start taking fuel in underneath that piston. So it kind of acts as like an intake valve. All your fuel in the air goes in underneath your piston, and at the same time, it's it's blowing out smoke, making spark, and sending the piston back down. And as it's coming down, it's trying to send that air and fuel out of that area. And it goes up in your transfer slots, which I ported and did some work on, and it will try to come back out this way. And that's why that piston has to shut that hole off to force it all up there. That's why I tell people not to really fuck with the timing so much. If you want to try to get more in, work on making the, your ports a little wider. <clears throat> uh, you can see up in there. But here we are on the exhaust side. And the same thing, when that piston's down, your port's open to the top of your piston.
and the exhaust would be coming out of that cylinder right now then it changes its direction and starts coming back up shutting that port off <clears throat> um, I didn't take the head off no need to you know I do have a new head gasket but it's the, just one last fucking step I gotta deal with it's my sled if it fucks up because of it, it's not a big deal. But it shouldn't fuck up. There's no reason for it to. Um, I'm going to throw the rewind back on it. The Y pipe back on. Carb flanges. Going to put the coils back on it. And put the pickle plugs in it. Um, I'll explain that. The bottom of the base, you got three plugs. They're just like little bolts. All they are is a drain plug, so if you flood the motor really bad, you can pull these out and you'll see fuel run right out of it. Um, I call them pickle plugs because when you pick a motor, you fill it full of oil. And before you start it, you have to get that oil out, or it's going to take you a while to start it. So these players, is you can just pull the plugs out, and all the oil and shit runs right out, put the plugs in, and it'll fire right out. Yeah, I drug the slide in, get the motor back in, just sitting in there. So I'm going to wind the bolts to it, put the exhaust on it, you know, reverse procedure of what we've already been through. Um, I'm going to put the belt on, but I'm going to jack up the ass end. Uh, when you do a motor, I recommend either lifting the ass end off the ground, or don't put the belt on. This shit can happen. And you figure you start this up in the garage, you got the belt on it and stuff, and you crank that over and it starts. Say it's got a fucking vacuum leak. The throttle slides are stuck. Throttle stuck. Something goes wrong and that thing's fucking pegged wide open. Yeah, that can make for an interesting fucking couple hours. Um, so I usually either jack the ass end up on a tall stand or just leave the belt off. So I run it, then put the belt on. But anyway, I'm going to bolt this in, hook it all up. Then I'm going to get back on the camera and find the tripod and rebuild the carburetors with you. Okay, here's the last carb. Now when I say clean these, I don't mean the actual thorough cleaning. Um, the sled ran good. Responded good, tuned to a fucking T. Um, just the bearing went. But where this has been sitting for a few years, there's going to be some shit in this bowl where the fuel's dried up. <clears throat> now the main goal here is to get that shit out that's going to be floating around, getting loose and getting sucked up into the jets. Um, I want to make sure my choke tube's clean, my main jet's clean, and my low speed jet's clean. That's just the main goal. So I'm not going to tear this thing all apart, even though there isn't much to them. Um, so basically, this is for you people that, you know, you bought a fucking sled or your sled's been sitting for a couple of years. Um, you got to get the shit out to get them to run. Now what I do is I tap the screws first. <clears throat> that little shock, believe it or not, helps break them free quite easily. And for some of you that don't know Polaris is, are wondering what the fuck this tube is on the bottom. This is a shit tube. Water is heavier than gas, so water settles. So if you get water in these carbs, in theory, it settles down into the tube. Dirt and shit can come down in here. So what you can do is slide that clamp back, take this plastic T out, and drain the fucking shit out of the carburetor and put it back together and go. Um, that comes in handy with today's gas because it fucking separates quickly. But anyway, what you gotta do is take the fucking screw the bowl screws out. 
and see what kind of a mess you've got in there. I don't expect these to be too bad. Yeah, see, they're not bad. Anything moves. Now this here, this is your choke tube. And that goes down inside this hole. And it sucks fuel through here, through up through that little hole. So you got to make sure this is clean, that you can actually get fuel from the bowl into this tube hole. Your high speed jet, which is your main jet. And that goes up through. And there's a needle on your slide that controls. And inside here is a low speed jet, which you need a little screwdriver to go in there and to get it out. You gotta get it out and make sure there's no shit in it. And all you do is just put that in your mouth and suck and blow on it. And <clears throat> you you should feel air passing through it. If it does, you're good to go. You can hit it like that. This one's cleaned up. This one's all right. Now these you're gonna need. It's a tip cleaner for a fucking torch. Because if that's plugged, you can go in there very gently, get it back open. Jet back in and tighten it. Same as this. You get on that the little wrench, you can screw that right out. But as you can see, it's clean. They're taking the little hats off the fucking hole. Now, the shovel ways you can do anything to clean bowls out. You can buy little brushes or whatnot. What I use is a popsicle stick to go in and scrub all the shit. Now, I'm not looking to make these look like new again. Be fucking spotless. If that was the case, I'd really fucking tear these cards apart, clean them good, and boil all the parts. Give them an ultrasonic, clean them. What I'm looking to do is get all the loose bullshit, all this scale, and anything that could come loose and get sucked into a jet. I want that fucking out. Compressed air, all your passages. Now, there, this is clean enough to run. Now, you got to put your floats back on, spike down. Now, you'll see some of these have little fucking plastic hats on top. If you lose them, don't sweat it. You don't need them. The floats aren't going to come off without them. These are just for when you're fucking sitting like this so the floats don't come out. You know? But once it's together, there's no risk of the floats coming off the shaft. Um, needle and seat adjustment. This is what's shutting your fuel off. Fuel comes in here, comes out there. When, the, when this fills up, those floats will rise up like that. And this arm rests on these pegs. When it fills up, it raises and shutting the fuel off. And you got to make sure that's all free. The adjustment, for the most part, these are parallel with the fuel bowl that little shelf you don't want it up or down if you get it too high they'll flood out if you get it too shallow 
You can run lean on top end because you're not letting enough fuel into the carburetor. But there, that's all it is. That's all there is to them. Um, you get a low speed adjustment. I'm not fucking with that because, like I said, the sled ran good. I had it tuned right fucking perfect. The throttle response was instant. The old lady could putt around on this machine all day long at 20 miles an hour in the woods and not follow plug. Um, but, say you wanted to clean these fucking things and strip them out completely. That's not a big deal. But what you want to do is note where this screw is. Make a little scratch. <clears throat> then wind that all the way in. Don't crank it down. Just wind it in to seat it. And count the number of turns. Let's see what gets down there. All right. That'd be a half a turn. That'd be a whole turn. Then we got a half a turn. Just a smidge more. So you mark down it's one and a half turns. Take it out, clean everything and put it back in. Seat it down, just like you did now. Then you back it off. One and a half turns till it lines up to your mark. On average, these are usually out one and a quarter, one and a half, somewhere in that area. Um, you got to tune it by, you know, th this is your throttle response. If you fucking whack it and you're getting bogs, you know, hesitation, wind that in just a little bit, like say a quarter of a turn at a time, and try it. If it gets better, wind it in a little bit more. If it gets worse, go the opposite direction. Okay. And here we are down inside. You can't see it where the fuck, but there's the oil pump. Now remember, you got to adjust this. Right here. To get that line to line up on your pump. They're hard to see, but you can see it by uh, the camera. But you get down in there, you can see the little line on the pump, the little line on that arm. And you want them to line up. Okay, we got the tech carbs on, fuel lines hooked up, clamps tightened. And the next thing you got to do is put your slides in. Um, you don't want any burrs on them. They want to be fucking clean. Lubricate them with a little bit of two-stroke oil. Nothing heavier. Um, as you see, there's a slot that goes all the way on one side and a parcel on this side. This side goes to your idle speed screw. And this, you'll see there's a peg in the carburetor. Right here. That's for that. That slot lines up to the peg. And what that does, it stops this from spinning. They just go in and screw together. So you get the fucking gasket up out of it. But that's how simple that is. So I'm going to lubricate these, put them in. Uh, still gonna put a choke in. I might, actually, I'll do that before I do the fucking slides. Makes it a little bit easier to get to. Okay, what I'm doing here is I'm gonna get as much of the old gas out as possible. I'm gonna pressurize the gas tank and having the fucking hose unhooked. Uh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to go get some fresh gas and I'll be back. Okay. Um.
I got some gas in it, some dry gas in it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pressurize the fuel system again with an air hose. And what I'm hoping to do is force fuel into the pump and into the carburetor. So I have to stand here and crank my fucking guts out to pump the fuel. It's either going to work or it ain't. Put the air box on it. Um, there's a little bit of snow. I might take it out across the road and the trail and run it a little bit. And do a plug reading. Make sure they're still fucking tuned good. There you have it. They're real simple, but they got to be clean. Um, they won't put up with any bullshit. Two strokes aren't forgiven. When it comes to running lean or rich, you'll either burn a cylinder or file plugs. If you get an air leak, you're going to rev high, you're going to fucking burn it out. Um, if your sled's running good one day, then all of a sudden it burns up the next day. Something's wrong. Don't just tear it apart and put a fucking piston in it. Find out why it leaned out and burnt up. You know, it didn't just get bored and say, hey, you know what, I think I'm just going to fucking melt down today. Um, there's always a reason for it to fuck up. Um, I gotta, I gotta go get some coolant because I don't have enough to top it off because I use what I took out of it. But yeah, there it is. Okay, there it is for now. I'm at a standstill until I get pistons. Um, I talked to the guy that I got the crank from. He's got a couple good ones he's going to send me. So, he's going to dig them out tomorrow and fucking box them up. And I'm going to PayPal them and He'll fucking send them. So, yeah. What's today? Today's what? Fucking Wednesday. So, probably a week. Next Wednesday, I can finish, can finish it and put it back in the sled. But, anyway. When I get the parts, we'll jump back on. But that gives me time to strip the block down and boil it in water. <laughs> 